Hello, hello, good afternoon. It's Monica from Life is Art, and this is the Friday 3.30 p.m. demo at the Christmas Movie Marathon online crop. And just pulling up my video, there we go. We are going to be looking at a couple different things this afternoon, and I'm just flipping my catalog here to find where it is so I'll be able to show you. We are going to be looking at something from the Essentials Catalog, as well as something from the um, current two-month catalog. So this is the current two-month catalog, which is September, October. So things are available in here while supplies last till the end of October. And we're going to be looking at this stamp set right here, which is called Holiday Express. It's the bottom part of this page. And, sorry, I've just got my finger in the page here. I'll put a page marker in. And so this one has um, this cute little car with the dog in it. It's got a sleigh with a little penguin. Then there's a present and a tree, a little bird, some Merry Christmas, bringing happy holiday greetings, happy holidays. I'll be home for Christmas, zooming by to say a cute little string of Christmas lights. And then two little trailers that can go along behind the car here, full of presents and gifts and trees and things and a cat and a, and a reindeer and a polar bear. So super fun, although it doesn't have to be a polar bear, it could be any kind of bear. Uh, super fun stamp set. So we're going to use that today. We're going to use the Holiday Express. And from the Essentials catalog, this is the catalog that start at the beginning of September and goes right through till the end of August 2024 has all the sort of staple items and we're going to be looking at the irresistibles that you see here in the specialty paper section and irresistibles are fun because they're white cardstock and they have um, UV coating in patterns on them so you can see here if I flip the page there are um, a pattern that looks like sprinkles, flowers, plaid, leaves, stripes, and little hearts. And you get two 12 by 12 sheets of each of these in the pack of the Irresistibles. And so those are fun to play with. So let's create a project using those two things. And we're going to be creating a swipe card. So to start our card, we're going to need a couple pieces of cardstock, and I'm using Jade. And if you're joining me live, you can just say hello or howdy so I know you're here. And if you're watching later on replay, you can say replay so I know who stopped by. I see Mom is watching. Hey, Mom! And Kimberly's here too. Hello, Kimberly! So we're starting out with two pieces of cardstock, and these are both cut to seven and a half by four and a quarter. So that is our size that we're starting with. Seven and a half by four and a quarter. And we are, um, we need two of them. <laughs> howdy, Kimberly. Kimberly is doing the hello and howdy. She's covering all the bases. So with these uh, two pieces of cardstock, we need to do some scoring. Now the completed card will fit into a standard size envelope, so four and a quarter by five and a half. Um, but we're gonna start out with this and we're gonna bring in our ruler and bone folder to do some scoring. And we need to score first at five and a half coming in from the side here. So we're scoring at five and a half, like so. And then we're also scoring at six and a half. Super simple. This is not a hard card to make. Really, I truly mean it. <laughs> it's not hard. You will have no trouble with it. So we've scored those two score lines. We're gonna take our second piece of Jade cardstock, and Jade is that new, really nice green. I'm using the dark side of the jade, so if I flip this one over, you can see that this is the dark side and this is the light side. The dark side is the true color side, and then the lighter side just gives you some variation in color, which is really fun, and you can use it in a lot of different um, ways to create some beautiful things. So we're gonna score this again in the exact same spots. So we're gonna score at five and a half, 
and at six and a half. And I will be posting the dimensions for this card whenever I do sort of a fun fold or a fancy fold card. I always post the dimensions of the pieces of paper. And um, when you look at the post where I post the photos, just scroll past the list of products and right down at the very bottom, it will say dimensions. And then there will be a list of the pieces of paper that you need. So we've gone ahead and scored those. Now we need to fold them. So this five and a half inch score line needs to be mounted and folded. So we're going to push from the back. We're going to push our score line up the mountain. Okay. And that brings our paper together like that. Make sure everything lines up and then crease it down. And then this six and a half inch score line needs to be valley folded. So we're going to push the score line down into the valley. And then we can line it up, make sure everything is nice and straight, and crease that down. Okay, so we've created, if we look at it this way, we've got a mountain and a valley. Or we can look at it this way, a mountain and a valley. <laughs> and it's kind of like a little Zed fold, accordion. Always have to do that when there's an accordion fold involved. We're going to do this exact same thing. It's kind of like algebra. You know when you have an algebraic equation? Whatever you do to the left side, you do to the right side. So whatever we do to this piece of paper, we're going to do to this piece of paper. So our five and a half inch score line is going to be mountain folded. So we're going to push the score line up the mountain. And make sure everything's lined up. Crease that down. And then our six and a half inch line is going to be valley folded. So we're going to push it down into the valley. And we can lay it down. It's always easier to crease something when you lay it down. Hey, Heather, nice to see you're watching. And Allison is here too. Michelle is here. That's a bad word in this house today. Algebra. Mm-hmm. You guys doing homeschooling and doing algebra? <laughs> Math in general is a bad word, in my opinion. So now we have our two pieces that, um, well, if I turn them this way, they will be identical. However, we are going to just flip this one around so that it mirrors or is opposite to the other one. So we have our two pieces with the long panels and then one one inch tab that will get attached here and one one inch tab that will get attached here. And that creates a little bit of this action, which is going to come into play with our swipe, okay? So we're gonna take one of these and set it aside, and then we're bringing in our second size piece of paper, but our third item. And this is a piece of the same jade paper, and it has been cut to two by three and a quarter. So two by three and a quarter. Hey Deborah, nice to see you're watching. And for this one, we need our pencil. So we're gonna line it up here on our Versamat. And on this two inch edge, we're gonna mark it right in the center at the one inch mark. Okay, so just make a little tick with your pencil. You'll never see it, it's all good. And then we're gonna go over here to the right hand bottom corner and we're gonna come up one inch and we're gonna make another mark. Just like that, that's all we gotta do. And then we're going to take our ruler and we're gonna score between those two marks. So I'm gonna turn mine a little bit on an angle here. We're gonna score between that one inch center mark and the one inch up on the right hand side. Creating a little scored triangle right like that. We don't even need to erase the pencil marks on this. All we have to do is create a mountain fold. So we're going to push the score line up the mountain and fold this little triangle back. So our piece will look like this now. So we've got this with a corner that's folded back. And then we can go ahead and crease that down. And this is our mechanism. I think it's like one of the simplest mechanisms of any fun fold card or fancy fold card ever. It's just a rectangle with a corner folded down. That's <laughs> super simple. 
I told you this was going to be super simple. Okay, so we're going to take one of our pieces that we started with. We're going to lay it down with our little accordion on the right hand side, just because it works better in my brain that way. Okay, then we're going to apply some adhesive on this little triangle. Okay, this folded back triangle. We're going to apply adhesive. Now I could use liquid glue, but I am much too impatient for that. So I'm going to use this and stick some double sided tape on it and peel off my backing. Now I went a little bit over the edges and because this is a mechanism, we don't want any of that sticky being in places it doesn't belong. So I'm just going to use my finger to push it, push it over to the side where it should be. That's the great thing about double sided tape. You just push it where you want it. Okay. So we've got our piece of paper with our little triangle that's folded back. And what we want to do is we want to tuck it in this crease here, this five and a half inch crease that we folded up. So we're going to take it and this flat edge right here is going to push right into that crease. And we want to leave about a half of an inch between this long edge and the edge of our card piece. So now it's hard for you to see that because they're the same color, <laughs> but it's about half an inch in from the edge. Make sure that it's running nice and parallel. This is tucked nice and straight right into the corner. Our little triangle is folded down like that. Okay. And then we're just going to take this flap and fold it down. That's all we have to do and stick it on there like that. And then it's going to be stuck there. So let me just lift that up so you can see. We're half an inch from this edge and we lined it up so it's nice and straight. And then that little triangle got stuck in there. So now what happens, watch, you can see the mechanism while it's not stuck together. If you imagine that there's another piece of paper in behind and I pull this end out, that little piece is going to go up. It's going to twist itself around and just go up like that. So that's creating our little swiper. Super simple. I told you it was going to be simple. Now all we need to do is stick it together. So on this one inch tab, that's the last one inch, we're going to add some adhesive. Like so. And like so. Okay. And then we're going to bring in our other piece. This time we're going to put the tab down at this end. We're going to the left with the tabs. We're not going to add any adhesive here, only on this very last flap of the card. We're going to add adhesive just like we did here. Sideways is always easier. <laughs> All the way across. And I'm adding two strips just because I want it to be the whole panel to be stuck down. Okay, so now we've got our little accordion over here with adhesive and our little accordion over here with adhesive and our little flippy flappy mechanism is stuck in there. Okay, once we're at this point, we can take some adhesive off of this end. And what we're going to do is we're going to flip this over. So we didn't turn it around. We just flipped it over. So our sticky bit is over here. In fact, my finger is stuck to it. And what we want to do is we want to line this creased edge up with this cut edge. So you just want to make sure that you're lining it up nicely because you want it to be straight along the bottom and you want it to be straight along the side so that everything stays nice and straight and stick that down. Okay, so there we've got that side stuck. Now we're going to do the same thing over here. And a few times I've made this and I've just taken all the adhesive backing off at the same time and stuck it all down and it worked okay. I didn't have too many boo-boos, but it's, you know, you might as well just do one side at a time because this folds out of the way 
it's not like it's hard to get in here to remove the backing. So now that we've removed the backing, we need to push this panel down and that makes this mechanism all nice and flat. And then all we have to do is make sure, see this little wiggle woggle thing happening? Push this all the way down so that it all lines up there. And then we're just gonna glide our hand across and stick it down over here. If you got it straight when you've put the first one on, then it should automatically line up on the other side. Now that we've done that, we have, oops, turn it the other way around. We have our little pop-up, which I think is super fun. It also makes for a little bit of a display. So you can stand it up like that, or you can give it a good tug and you can have it standing up with the swiper up in the air. Okay, now it's just a matter of decorating. That's super simple. We didn't have to do a lot of work to create that base of the card. So I'm bringing in a piece of rosy glitter paper, that new rosy color. Isn't that gorgeous? Super fun. So we're using the new jade, the new rosy. And this glitter paper has been cut to five and a quarter by four inches. So it's just a little bit smaller than our card front. I'm going to give it a little extra adhesive. And where's my pokey tool? There it is. I find it's easier for me to get the backing off sometimes if I do it this way. Just use my little, my little piercing tool to slide under it and pop it off. There we go. So we're going to center this gl rosy glitter paper on the front of our card. So I like to get one end where I think it should be and then just test the bottom. And if it's not quite where I want it, I can lift it up and adjust. So I think that's pretty good. There we go. Glitter paper always feels fun. But the great thing about our glitter paper, you know, cut edges, you don't get glitter everywhere, which is fabulous. <laughs> and then because we have this little peekaboo spot right here, let's add a little bit of glitter in there too. We don't want to miss any opportunity to add a little glitter. So this piece is, mm -mm -mm. I didn't write it down. Silly me, I thought I did. Doo -doo. Oh yes I did, it's three quarters of an inch by four inches. And we'll just peel this off. Now, if any of you are watching who are makers, this is one of the cards from the Operation Smile um, charity auction um, kit that I created. So if you bought the um, Operation Smile um, maker collection to raise money for Operation Smile. Um, you will have the instructions for this and access to um, videos on how to make all the four cards in there as well. But we're doing it again here. Um, so we've got our glitter paper on there. Now our next layer, we're jumping over and we're going to be using the Irresistibles paper and we're going to use some ink on it. So I'm just grabbing my all-purpose mat stick that down and I'm going to be using some jade ink and uh, a blending brush to add some color to the Irresistibles paper. So I've got a piece here and it's the plaid Irresistibles and this has been cut to four and three quarters by three and a half and I hope you can see in the light I'm kind of moving it around so that you can see that shiny UV coating that's on there. The other thing I need while I'm doing this, besides my ink and my blending brush, is a soft cloth or a tissue. Tissue, pardon me, I've got hiccups. I always get hiccups. <laughs> and what we're going to do is we're going to do some ink blending on here, picking up that jade ink, and we're just going to go around all the edges of the Irresistibles cardstock and add some color on there. I want actually quite a bit of color around the edges. 
and you're just blending it on like you would if you were stenciling or creating a fun background. There we go. That picked up some ink. Got to put a little bit of pressure on it. All the way around. Like so. And that's a little bit of puffy drawer liner. And it does help your ink pad from swizzling around too much while you're doing ink blending. I'm going to use that for a second. And I'm kind of avoiding right in the center, if you notice that. So what I'm going to do is, now that I've gone all the way around, I'm just going to lightly blend in the center. Because I want it to be a little lighter, kind of like a little glow spot. And then all you do is you take your soft cloth and you just buff on those white parts. Just a little buffy polish and you'll see the cloth is picking up little bits of the jade ink that is sitting on top of those UV coated pieces. Let's go all the way around. It's probably also picking up stuff that's on my Versamat. Now, I'm just going to add a little bit more right on the edge. This is why you want to use the Versamat for this because we can just wipe the Versamat off when we're done. We're just going all the way around right on the edge, adding a bit more color like that. And then again, give it a nice little wipe off to get the excess ink. How fun is that? Now you can really see that pattern popping right through those irresistibles. So fun. And because it's um, you ink it yourself or spray it or do whatever you want with it, um, you can create any color, which is fabulous. You want a plaid pattern in turquoise? then use turquoise colored ink. If you want a plaid pattern in yellow, just use yellow ink. Super versatile. Okay, let's move this out of the way. The best way to store the all-purpose mat is just to roll it up. And that way you don't get any creases. There we go. So there's that. Now we're going to stick this down to our, um, keep making sure my swiper's at the top, we're going to stick it down to our glitter paper. And like I was saying before, glitter paper requires liquid glue. So let me just grab my liquid glue. It's way over there. And it takes a decent amount of liquid glue. You can see some of the, the um, ink that got picked up off of the all-purpose mat onto my fingers and onto the cardstock. Just get my glue going here. And we're going to put a good amount of glue on here. Glitter paper has little nooks and crannies. So you want to make sure that you have enough glue to get in the nook and cranny and still touch the cardstock to make sure it sticks. So we can just go ahead and center that on the rosy glitter paper like that. And then the best thing to do is to put some weight on it. Ink pads work great. Let me grab another one. There we go. <laughs> so I'm going to set this aside and let that just, just mellow, chill over there for a minute. Okay, now we're going to do a little bit of stamping. I've got two of the vehicles from the Paula Days stamp set the little car and then this one with the bear loaded up on my um, Misty and I've got a piece of white daisy cardstock in here ready to go just so I'm prepared you know gotta be prepared must be a boy scout <laughs> and then I'm going to use my intense black ink for this and the reason I'm using the Misty for this I could do it by hand but I find that I like to have the option of stamping it twice or even three times if I want to. So just gonna close that, give it a little squish. Not bad. The thing that I always look at is the tires. 
the little top of the birdie didn't quite come out either because those tires are solid black and so I want them to be solid black with the ink I don't want to have any any weirdness or missed bits so that's the great thing about the misty is you can do it more than once if your hand doesn't slide very well put another tissue on there <laughs> help it slide okay let's do quality control check here I think that looks pretty good so two stamps did it let's put the magnet back in we'll wash those later so we've got that. I also want to do another little bit of stamping. And for this, we're going to use the rosy ink to tie in that rosy glitter paper. And I forgot to grab it. So there's my rosy ink. And we have a couple more pieces of paper here. And these are White Daisy. This first one is um, half an inch by two and three quarters or two and three quarters by half an inch. And I'm gonna stamp out the zooming by to say, cause we've got these cute little vehicles going here. So we're gonna do zooming by to say, I'm gonna stamp that right on our little strip of paper, zooming by to say. And then I also want to, you know, we might as well wash that while we're at it. Stamp shabby. And then I've also got the Merry Christmas. Now the Merry Christmas comes in a straight line, but I wanted to be able to use it stacked one on top of the other without having to mask. So all I did was I took my straight stamp and in between the word Merry and Christmas, I cut like a little chevron cut, making sure not to hit any of the stamp that is needed for the inking part. And because I've cut it in a chevron, I can then take my Christmas and stick it back into the little notch so that I know I've lined them up properly when I want to stamp in a straight row. Um, but it's nice to be able to just chop those apart so I can use them in a different way. So this little piece of White Daisy is um, two and a quarter by one and a half. And I'm just going to stamp Merry Christmas in rosy right in the center of that. So this card is sticking pretty close to the jade and rosy colors throughout, just for some fun, festive consistency. All right, and oh, I have one more bit of stamping. So let's do that too. We're going to need something on our card that we can write on because we've got all these dark green elements, right? And so I've got a piece of white daisy and it has been cut to four and three quarters by three and a half. And I thought I wanted to use this little row of Christmas lights. Super cute. And um, so I'm gonna stamp that in the Intense Black as well. We might as well do it now because we're gonna color it. Of course we are. So let's stamp that up or ink that up. And I gotta scooch it over so I don't stick my hand in the ink pad. And just add a little bit of festive goodness, top and bottom. Maybe we'll switch it around so there's some variety. And there we go. Lovely, okay. I think we're done all the stamping. Good, so let's do some coloring. And I'm gonna use my tri-blend markers for this. I'm hopefully gonna go quickly so you don't have to sit and me watch me color for hours. I'm going to start with the blue turquoise shades and I'm going to use the mid color of the blue turquoise shades and this color is actually pretty much identical to the new color of the year which is Journey. So if you don't have this particular um, color you can figure out a different color to use. Or you could use the Journey Shimmer Brush, which would be super fun because it would also add a little bit of sparkle, right? So we're just going to color different elements on here. Again, like I say, when I do coloring, I like to stay within a selection of three to five colors, if possible, so that it's not too much color, kind of keep it a little more cohesive. 
And so I'm only using four colors for these uh, little vehicles here. So there, and then we're going to color in the bottom of this one. Sadly, this particular color was retired. I don't know if it's still available, even though it's retired, it might still be available. Um, because it's exactly the color of the color of the year. It was kind of surprising that they retired it, but um, they might bring it back as needed. If you're ever looking for something that you don't normally see, um, I mentioned this the other day, in the catalog, when they list the optional or additional optional items for the scrapbooking workshop kit and the card making workshop kit, that's where you'll find things like the tri-blend markers listed, like one or two at a time, or um, I picked up recently the uh, Christmas red stickles. Now, stickles are not in our core catalog anymore, but they will sometimes bring them in when they um, go well with a project. So that's when you can snag those little items. I'm going to color this car blue too. Who doesn't like a blue car? And just go all the way around. Now when you're coloring with markers, I like to color in sections. So I will kind of visually figure out sections. And this one is actually really good because you just follow what the shape of the car is. So I'm going to go around the fender here and just keep going. Because if you know about coloring of markers, you know that if you go over the same spot multiple times, it's going to get darker. And then you're going to get weird lines and whatnot. So what you do is you just color in sections and it will alleviate some of that issue because you're not continually going over and over and crisscrossing and all that. And um, I'm going to leave my bumpers white because they're going to be like chromey, but I am going to color my door and my fenders just as separate sections. So now I'm going to come and do the door and I'm going to avoid the handle of the door. I'm going to try anyway, because I want that to have that same bumper chromey look. And just go ahead and fill that in and then we're going to go and do our fenders. Sometimes fenders are chromey, but we're going to do ours as all colored. Like that. I like this color. It's a really nice color. That's the blue turquoise shades. I am a sucker for anything blue. <laughs> So, you know, anything that says it's blue, I like it, but I really like this color. Okay, so there, we've colored several elements with the blue turquoise shades mid-color. Then I'm going to bring in my light green, and I'm going to start first with the mid. The mid? Let me just double check. Maybe I want the dark. Yes, I'm going to start with the dark. So Let's stick that back on there. The dark of the light green always makes me laugh. The dark light green. And we're going to color in our little wreath. And I'm going to avoid the little berries because, you know, we're going to color those something else. So just kind of work our way around. There we go. And then my tree, because it's got this fun pattern, I thought we could play up that pattern. So I'm going to kind of do every other stripe in the dark. And then on the opposite side, I'm going to do like the checkerboard. So I'm going to alternate it because why not? We can do that, right? And then let's also color in this present. The trick with keeping your colors to a minimum when you're doing coloring like this is to um, not have the same color right beside itself all the time. You want to spread them out, okay? And then let's also do this box here on top. Because if you use minimal colors and you do the same thing side, 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 it just all looks like the same thing and you didn't do anything. You didn't put any effort or thought into it. So you might as well 
try and space it out. So again, I'm going to do the same thing with the tree where I'm going to leave some of them and come back in with the mid color and do them a little lighter. So I'm going back to my tree over here and coloring in the ones that I didn't color before with the lighter color. So it does still all look green, but there is some variation. And then back over here, we'll do those other two spots on the tree. Oh, Christmas tree, oh, Christmas tree. <laughs> and then, of course, we've got green. We need some red. We're coming in with the dark red blend. And we're going to color in our little bear's hat. We're going to leave our bear as a polar bear, which means dun, 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 we don't have to color him. <laughs> we're going to do the star on the tree. We're going to do the berries or balls on the wreath. And then we're going to do some stripes on our present. And we'll do the little bow. And we'll color this present down here. So you see how we've managed to use just three colors, but we've spread them out enough that it feels like variety. And we've also left some white space. There's never any problem about leaving some white space. Now let's come over here. We're going to do his beak. We're going to do the little heart. We're going to do a red bow. And you can mix it up, do it however you want. This is just how I'm doing it. And let's do the stripes on the box. We're adding a little bit more red up here because this is a lot of blue down here. And then this box as well. Now my red, because I use it a lot, is getting worn out. I can hear it scritchy scratching. Okay. And I realized I forgot one thing I wanted to color, which was, wait a minute, we used the mid, didn't we? The steering wheel. We're going to color the steering wheel. And then the last thing I want to color, we're bringing in one last color, and that is the brown-gray blend to color our little dog here that's driving. I'm going to use the lightest one. I'm just going to color his whole body in the brown-gray like that. And then I'm going to switch to the mid just to go around that little eye mark. And that is it for that. Now let's do a little bit of coloring on these lights. Just turning it around till I find the one I want. We're going to do three different colors. So one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. One, two, three. Now well, let's start at this end. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two. Okay. And some green. Do yeah. Let's go for the dark one. And I'll do every one that's beside the red. I don't know what it is, but Christmas lights. You put some Christmas lights on something. It looks festive right? You got a stack of books, you put some Christmas lights on it. Woo! Christmas decorating. <laughs> you got a, you know, an old car sitting in your front yard, put some Christmas lights on it. Wow, it's a festive decoration. Chris Christmas lights are just great that way, right? Anybody else do lots of decorating around their place with Christmas lights? <laughs> there we go. Okay, so that's ready for the back of our card. These are going to be used, but this particular number needs to be cut out. And I am pretty sure that these can be purchased with thin cuts, unless they're sold out. But you know, you know the drill. Monica buys thin cuts very infrequently. <laughs> so we're going to do some rough cut, and then we're going to do some fussy cut. So we're going to get rid of the excess paper. And then let's go in for the fussy cut. So we're going to pivot our paper as we go. And we're going to use the back end of our scissors. And when we go to cut again, we're going to slide our scissors up the previous cut. And we're just going to leave a halo of the cardstock showing all the way around. 
Now, I'm not going to get so fussy as to cut out where the windows are. Mm -mm, that's not happening. Not on this one. And we just go all the way around. Yes, this does have thin cuts. Sorry, I just reminded myself. It does have thin cuts. Because I got, this was actually a prototype stamp that I got um, before convention for my class. And they gave me a piece of paper that was printed out that had the, what the fussy cut or what the thin cuts would cut it out looking like. Um, but I was not given the thin cuts. They must have known. Monica doesn't need thin cuts because she likes to fussy cut. <laughs> Somehow they just knew. Hey, Laura, nice to see you're watching. Yes, Mum. the all-purpose mat is nicknamed the Messy Mat. I just realized I was not watching the comments whatsoever. It's too busy crafting. Hey, Joanne, you're very late. That is okay. Thank goodness for the wonder of Facebook and the replay button <laughs> where we can go back and see what we missed. Now, this particular card style, if you guys have followed along for a while, is probably not new to you because I have created other cards using this swiper card um, style. So it's not a rock your world new thing, but... It's a super fun one, and I think it kind of looks cute with this um, stamp set and the irresistible. So I thought, yeah, we're going to do that. So going around the little wreath, you can just kind of wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. And there we go. Super easy. Okay. Now let's bring in our pieces. That's not our card. This is our card. That was my reminder about how to put the piece in, just so I didn't forget. <laughs> so this is the one that's been sitting under the ink pads, um, getting ready. And so now we've got our cute little vehicles here to stick on the front. And we're going to do that with some foam tape. So let me just grab that. Add a couple pieces of foam tape on here, like so. And another one there. Maybe we'll be, we'll be one of those people that puts a lot of foam tape on it for this. And then here. Now I see on here, I don't know if you can see it. It might not show up in the camera. But because of the glue underneath that wet glue, and because I put a weight on it, you can almost see where the where the ink pads were sitting and holding it down <laughs> because the glue kind of seeped through the cardstock, but it looks okay. It's not, it's not terrible or anything, so we're just not going to worry about it. So let's go ahead and stick this on. So that might be something to watch for when you have to use a decent amount of liquid glue. Um, that you might want to be careful about putting too much weight on it because it'll try to absorb the liquid. Okay, so now we want to kind of space our little guys out. So that looks good. Let's stick this guy down and then we'll add him. And of course he's got a little hitch on here. So we're just going to tuck the end of that hitch right under the back end of the car, right along by the bumper, just like that. See how they nestle right like that and stick it down. And then we have our um, little sentiment. So we've got zooming by to say, and we're going to stick that on right up here. Zooming by to say, and then we need to pull out our swiper. And this little part is what's going to pop up on our swipe card. But I want to make it so that it gonna, is going to run smoothly in and out of the card. And so I'm going to round the corners. And I know I showed you guys my method for rounding, where you line it up against your scissors and then just kind of pivot as you squeeze your scissors down and roll it. Now you could use a corner rounder. 
you don't have to do it my way. I'm just showing you that's how I do it to round my corners. I am somehow inept, and corner rounders and I do not get along at all. So I just stick with my scissors and call it a day. So now we're going to go ahead and adhere this. There's a little bit of gap on either side. So we're going to make sure that our adhesive doesn't go too far to the edge. We're going to stick to the center. And then we can just, I'm going to turn it this way. We're going to line it up with the top and stick it on down. And there we go. We've got that. Then we're going to turn it over to the back side. And this is where we're going to stick our panel for writing our message. Because there's no inside of this card, right? Because we've kind of glued it shut. There's no inside, so we needed a panel on the back. And that's what this one is with our little lights. Nice little spot to write a message. There's going to be a nice border of the jade all the way around. And the good thing is you can lay it down flat like this to write your message. So you don't have to try and, you know hover in midair. Okay, so are we ready? We have completed our swipe card, our holiday express swipe card. We started out with our green jade base, adding on our rosy glitter paper, then the irresistibles that we inked up with the jade ink. We added some stamping with the rosy color to tie it in, and then of course stamping and coloring with the tri-blend markers. Backside, we have our panel with our lights, and then we've got a little glitter in the little nook here, and whoop, pop up, zooming by to say Merry Christmas. How funny is that? I love swipe cards. You can do so many fun things. So on display, you can have it with the swipe up or the swipe down. Totally up to you. And I think that is a super fun card to share with somebody, one that they're going to play with and show to their friends. And um, kids especially will love a card like that, I'm sure. So I hope you enjoyed seeing that come together. And we will be back on at 7 o'clock for Chat and Craft. So hope to see you then. Have a great rest of the afternoon. And we'll see you later. Toodaloo. Bye.